Hello class 6 students how are you all I am Monica Bajaj your science teacher and today we will discuss about unit number 6 natural phenomena chapter number 14 light shadows and reflections light is the form of energy which is needed to see things we cannot see any object in the darkness of light when light is stopped by an object then shadow is formed when the rays of the light which fall on the surface of the object are sent back, then reflection of the light takes place. Two great scientists, Sir Isaac Newton and Christian Huygens, gave out the principle of nature of light. Sources of light Any object that emits light is called a source of light. Sources of light can be natural or artificial let's study about natural sources the sun the stars and the fireflies are the natural sources of light second one is man-made sources candles electric bulbs cfls leds oil lamps etc are made by humans they are called man-made or artificial source of light Luminous and non-luminous objects Luminous objects The object which emit give out light are called luminous object Sun, stars, bulb and tube light are some example of luminous objects In fact, all sources of light are luminous objects Non-luminous objects the objects which do not emit lights or give out are called non-luminous objects. The non-luminous objects, however, shine or are visible because they reflect or scatter the light falling on them from some luminous objects. Table, chair, moon, pencil, paper, etc. are some examples of non-luminous objects. Transparent translucent and opaque objects there are three situations which occur when light falls on an object the light passes through an object the light passes partially through an object or the light is either observed or reflected by the object an object which allows light to pass through it is called transparent object glass water Acrylic sheet, cellophane paper and air are the example of transparent objects. An object which allow only a part of light through it is called translucent object. Frosted glass, ground glass, wax paper are blurred and skin are example of translucent objects. An object which does not allow light to pass through it is called an opaque object. Wood, cardboard, metals, most rocks and stones are examples of opaque objects. Rectilinear propagation of light. When you switch on a torch in dark, light appears to go on straight outwards. While seeing a film in a cinema hall, you may have noticed that the light from the projector appears to go in a straight line towards the screen. All these observations show that the light travels in a straight line. The property of light traveling in a straight line in a medium is called rectilinear propagation of line. Effect of rectilinear propagation of light. The rectilinear propagation of light is harmful in information of shadow. Rectilinear propagation of light is helpful in formation of shadows. Formation of eclipse and formation of images as in the case of a pinhole camera. Ray and beam. When we want to represent the propagation of light with a diagram, we represent it with the help of rays and beams. Rays of light. The amount of light traveling along a straight line is called a ray of light. Beam. A group of lights moving in an organized manner is called a beam of light it is of three types first is parallel beam the collection of rays 
traveling parallel to each other is known as parallel beam of light. The distance between the rays remains the same. B. Convergent beam. When rays in a beam come towards each other and the distance between the rays goes on decreasing till all the rays coverage or meet at a point, the beam is called convergent beam. C. Divergent beam. In a divergent beam, the rays spread out or diverse from a point and the distance between the rays goes on increasing. Shadow. A shadow is the dark area formed by an opaque object when it prevents the light from falling on another object or surface. Thus, for the formation of a shadow, you need the following three things. First one is a source of light. Second is an opaque object that obstructs or comes in the way of the source of light. And third is a screen. Characteristics of a shadow. A shadow is formed when the light is blocked by an opaque object. It is always black. No matter what the color of object is, this is because the shadow is formed in the absence of light rays. It gives an idea about the shape of an object. It however gives no detail of the object. The size of a shadow depends on the position of the source of light with respect to the object. The shadow of an object is formed only on another opaque object. Opaque object surface called the screen. Next is eclipse. An eclipse is an event which is caused due to a straight line conf configuration. Due to a straight line configuration or three celestial bodies, the sun, the moon and the earth. The term eclipse is most often used to describe either a solar eclipse when the moon's shadow crosses the earth's surface or a lunar eclipse when the moon moves into earth's shadow. Let's study how this eclipse occur. First one is solar eclipse. A solar eclipse occur when the sun, the moon and the earth lie in a straight line with the moon in the center. The moon blocks the light of the sun from reaching the earth. Thus, the shadow of the moon is formed on the earth. Due to that respective position of the sun, the moon and the earth, a solar eclipse always occur on a new or no moon day. The part of the earth which lies in the umbra region of the moon's shadow experiences a total solar eclipse and the part of the earth lies in the penumbra of the moon's shadow experience a partial solar eclipse. Next is lunar eclipse. Lunar eclipse occur when the sun, the earth and the moon are in straight line with the earth in the center. In this position, we have a full moon day on the earth. As the moon passes through the earth's shadow, we experience our lunar eclipse. The different stages of the lunar eclipse are discussed below. When the moon lies completely in the umbra region of the earth's shadow, it is a total lunar eclipse. When the moon lies partly in the umbra region and partly in the penumbra region, it is partially lunar eclipse. When the moon lies completely in the penumbra region of the earth's shadow, there is no lunar eclipse. It is so because the penumbra region is region which is partly illuminated and the moon in this region receives some light. Pinhole camera. Pinhole camera is based on the principle that light travels in a straight line. Construction. A pinhole camera consists of a cardboard or a wooden box having a pinhole in its front face and a translucent grounded glass wax paper screen at the back. The distance between the pinhole and the screen may be fixed or adjustable. The distance between the pinhole and the screen can be adjusted by moving the screen towards or away from the pinhole. Working When the pinhole of the camera is turned towards the bright object, a real inverted image of the object is formed on the screen. 
characteristics of the image formed the image formed is real and inverted image is generally smaller than the size of the object now advantages of a pinhole camera a pinhole camera has the following advantages no focusing is required there is no lenses in a pinhole camera therefore the image is free from spherical and chromatic aberrations disadvantages of a pinhole camera a pinhole camera has the following disadvantages the image form does not give any details usually the image is hazy the image is obtained on the screen no permanent record of the image can be obtained pinhole camera cannot be used for studying moving object reflection of light the bouncing of light from a surface is called reflection a mirror reflects almost all the light falling on it the ray of light which falls on object is called incident ray of light the ray of light which gets bounced or reflected from the surface of an object is called reflected ray of light the perpendicular to the reflecting surface at the point of incident is called the normal the angle between the incident ray and the normal at the point of incidence is called the angle of incidence it is generally represented by angle i the angle between the reflected ray and the normal is called the angle of reflection it is represented by angle r regular and irregular reflection the surface of the mirror is very smooth when the ray of light falls on this surface it gets reflected along a particular direction this is the reason that a smooth surface gives a sharp and clear image reflection of light from a smooth mirror is called regular reflection if the reflected surface is irregular rough the rays of light that falls on it are scattered in all the direction this is called irregular or this is called irregular or diffuse reflection difference between a shadow and a image see this table image and shadow image it is of the same color as the object shadow it is black image is formed due to reflection or refraction of light shadow is formed when the light falls on an opaque body the image is of the same size as the object the size of the shadow depends on the position of the source of light and may be bigger or smaller than the object image gives more information such as color structure etc about the object shadow does not provide any details about the object it gives an idea about the shape of the object let's quick revise with readers digest light is the form of energy which is needed to see things any object that emit light is called a source of light the object which emit lights are called luminous objects an object which allows light to pass through it is called transparent object an object which allows only a part of light pass through it is called a translucent object an object which does not allow light to pass through it is called an opaque object okay class we have done our chapter now it's time to take your leave thank you bye bye